prerequisites for having a conversation. I get asked by parents a lot, I wanna teach my child fill in the blank with a very complex skill, not really having an understanding of all of the small fundamental skills that go into this very complex skill. So this series is gonna be devoted to identifying skills that we hope that our kids can learn how to do, but then having an understanding of all of the other skills that we need to teach our child before we can even begin to talk about the complex skill. I cannot tell you how many parents have asked me, I want to be able to have a conversation with my child. I want to be able to ask my child about their day at school and have them tell me about school. And at this point where they're asking me, their child may be at the level where they're asking for the things that they want and need, and that's it. That is sort of where their language skills lie. And it's so hard to be able to explain to a parent what we need to teach kids before we can even work on having a conversation. So here are the prerequisite skills to engaging in conversation. So the first and most important thing that we need is motivation to engage in conversation with another person. We are never going to get conversation to happen naturally. We're never going to get our kids to ask us questions if they don't have an already present motivation for this type of interaction. So we have to go back to making sure that we have done a ton of work, establishing value in people and making interaction a reinforcing thing for our kids. We have to get our kids to want to engage with us if we ever expect that conversation is going to be a skill that our child has. So make sure that we're working on establishing people and interaction as reinforcers, that we're pairing ourselves and our faces with things that already serve to reinforce our kids so that our kids are motivated to engage and want to interact with other people. Next, our kids need to be able to answer questions and not just questions that they've memorized the answers to. So in the very beginning stages of an ABA program, you'll often hear kids learning how to answer questions like, what's your name? Where do you live? How old are you? And these are all answers that are simply memorization. They hear the question, they know what the answer should be. But in a conversation, answers change based on context. Answers change based on the way that the question was asked. So if we're asking our child, how was your day today? There's not one simple answer that they're going to memorize and say when they hear that question. They need to know what the question means and then they need to be able to recall information from their day and be able to give an answer that's relatively truthful to what their day was. So how was your day today? It was good. What did you do today? Oh, I played on, at the playground at recess and I played with Molly. So we have to know what the questions mean we need to be able to discriminate between different WH questions, which can be very hard. So what did you do today versus where did you go today versus who did you play with today are all very similar questions in their structure. They all end in today, so it can get confusing. You really need to be paying attention to each word in the question in order to be able to answer the question correctly. So hear the question, understand what the question means, discriminate between very small changes in the question based on the words that are being used, and have the recall to be able to pull up the information that will accurately answer the question. And in addition to being able to answer questions, we also need to be able to ask questions to our conversational partner. So a lot of times we can teach kids to ask for the things that they want and need. I want bananas, can I have some milk? So this is all questions that are simply related to their own personal motivation. And what they get from that question is usually something that they're asking for. So can I have a banana? is a question, but the answer is not yes or no. The answer that they're looking for is that they get to have the banana. So the banana is the reinforcer to asking that question. When we move into just conversational questions, the answer alone is the reinforcer or needs to be the reinforcer to be strengthen question asking behavior. So if I'm gonna ask my conversational partner, how was your weekend? I need to have a motivation to hear the answer to that question. I need the answer to that question to function as a reinforcer for me so that I will ask other questions like that in the future. Asking questions is very, very different than asking for tangible things that I want and need. So there's a very big difference between this. You can work on getting our kids to ask questions of other people, but they, again, need to have an understanding of the differences between the different WH questions. 
Asking a where question gets you a where answer. Asking a who question gets you a who answer. And these answers need to serve as reinforcers for a conversation to continue and maintain. So those three things are the main main fundamental behaviors that need to exist in our child's repertoire before we can even begin to talk about conversation. But in addition to those three main components, there's all these other subtle behaviors that need to exist in order for a conversation to move smoothly between two people. One, I need to know that there is a back and a forth to a conversation. I can't just ask a hundred questions in a row and have my conversational partner answer them. I need to ask a question, wait for a response, maybe use that response in order to ask a follow-up question that's similar. There needs to be able to be a back and forth. I need to pause and allow my conversational partner an opportunity to ask me a question as well. So there's a back and a forth. There's sort of a structure to the way conversations move and I need to be able to understand that there's back and forth to that, not just my own part in the conversation. I need to be able to learn to stay on topic. If my conversational partner asks me a question like, what's your favorite food? And I say, my favorite food is spaghetti. I went to the Mario Brothers movie last week. It's a bit of abrupt. It's kind of maybe throw our conversational partner off a little bit. So there's, there's, we need to learn how to stay on topic and then learn how to make some more smooth topic transitions. If I do want to talk about something else, there's a better way to get to the Super Mario Brothers movie rather than just abruptly moving from the food conversation to the Mario Brother conversation. I need to learn how to talk about things that might be of interest to my conversational partner, but might not be of my own personal interest. So if I'm obsessed with Super Mario Brothers, I still need to be able to learn how to ask questions about other topics that maybe my friend likes to talk about. If my friend enjoys talking about music and I only want to talk about Super Mario Brothers, guess what? That friendship's not going to maintain very well. We need to be able to go back and forth. We can talk about Super Mario Brothers sometimes, but I also need to learn how to ask questions about music so that my conversational partner wants to have a conversation with me. I also need to learn how to make comments. Having a conversation is not just about asking questions or answering questions, but it's also about making comments throughout. So if I ask my friend, hey, how was your weekend? And my friend says, oh, I went to Magic Mountain and rode on a really cool roller coaster. If I just ask another question, that might seem a bit odd. But instead I say, oh, wow, that's so cool. I love roller coasters. My favorite roller coaster is at Disneyland. So there's comments that also need to sort of intersperse throughout the conversation in order to make it move smoothly. And again, at the core of all of this needs to be a present motivation to engage with the other person and a motivation for the information that we're getting from the person in the conversation. So these are all of the prerequisite skills that are necessary in order to be able to even begin working on teaching conversation to our autistic kids. Make sure that our autistic kids want to have conversations with others, that they're motivated to learn how to have conversation in a more smooth way so that they don't feel so uncomfortable about it. And make sure that you're working on all of these other skills before even beginning to think about conversation. So if you're a parent and you're like, gosh, I just wanna have a conversation with my child, look at all of these other skills first to see if those skills exist in your child's repertoire. And if not, start there and then build yourself up to having the conversation.